Let's welcome in our co-hosts on the program today. He is the Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney, Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Good to be here. And I want to thank your counterpart, Matt Miller, for bringing in donuts today, too, by the way. There's, uh, I think, really? on the kitchen table. After I run him out of here, he br- you tell me that he, he a, left that's donuts? That's a kind man right there. I know. Right? And he, that's a kind man. Yes, he is. He yeah. is. Also, uh, he is a former member of the House of Delegates, John Doyle. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning. And you'll notice I brought my coffee. That's great, because the, <laughs> the only time I've ever seen a subdued John Doyle was the morning you showed up and forgot your coffee. And I didn't even know who you were that day. It was just someone I didn't recognize. I had no idea you were fueled by caffeine so much. Right? Yeah. Not, not as much as I used to be. No? Well, well you I, did tell me you cut back some. Uh, I cut back considerably about two. 15 years ago, yeah. yeah. You used to do like eight cups a day or something? Eight, nine, ten sometimes. I, I remember that one. Ten. <laughs> I can't imagine ten I, cups oh, of coffee. Oh, I was climbing like the walls, and yeah, that's a... Uh... All right, well, it's good to have you here with just your one cup of coffee. Uh, Steve <laughs> Catlin is in the building, too. I want to say good morning to Steve before we officially begin his segment. Uh, Steve, as always, looking great, man. Good morning. Yeah, good to see you here. Uh, last night, there was a uh, town hall-style meeting that was called by Jim Klein, and uh, Jim... Uh, is on the phone right now. Uh, I know there were many many members of the community who were in attendance with that. Steve Gokenauer, who is a member of the, uh, Eddie Gokenauer, I'm sorry, is a member of the county commission and is the liaison to Parks and Rec, uh, was there as well. Uh, I understand Mayor Kevin Knowles was present. Uh, John Hardy, uh, Delegate Hardy, I know was there. He had texted me as well. Uh, Jim, who else was in attendance that you can recall? Uh, Andy Blake, uh, Delegate uh, Chuck Horst, Corey Roman, City Council at large, and from Parks and Recreation, Jen Smith was present. I uh, believe the uh, leader of the local chapter, the NAACP, Gloria Carter. Uh, come a couple other community leaders. Uh, 23 total people actually signed the visitor's log. All right, very good. What was some of the feedback you got about uh, preferred use or suggested use for the uh, Lambert Park, Lambert Pool? Well, suggested use was not really the, the, the theme of the discussion. Much of what was discussed probably could have been answered in whether or not at city council meetings or by attending the parks and rec meetings. The general consensus of the meeting was, or at least in my interpretation, that the community was not well informed of, of what's going on. There were people who weren't aware, for example, that there were EPTA um, buses that supposedly were driving or providing the opportunity for free passes to go to War Memorial Park. And the criticism was that that apparently had not been shared very often. The, the change in the summer basketball schedule, um, streamlining the fall basketball season, which means that the kids in the north end with transportation issues couldn't participate in um, – summer basketball, and then with fall being moved to, to uh, uh, Randy Smith Center, that was a question. The, the concerns were the interim plan, what will be planned if Lambert cannot open next summer. And at one point in time in the conversation, it was said it will not open. However, at one point in the conversation, someone said, oh, there's a chance it could open next year. So there's still some some questions yet to be answered. Uh, the, the City Council and Parks and Rec did invite the public to attend those meetings. There were some questions about when they occur. Um, there's going to be a public hearing at some point in the future when the CEC findings are released. And, and again, it's, you know, the, the criticism of Parks and Rec is, is that the information was not shared. People didn't know when the meetings were available they didn't know what the problems were. There was not good communication to the, the, the public. And then what can be done in the future? People did make suggestions, like why a splash pad? It serves a very limited audience. People ask about outdoor basketball or outdoor other opportunities. And the elected officials who were present, specifically from the city, did address those concerns. And it's unfortunate because the CEC scope of work that was presented on August 10th was actually printed and available for the visitors. I think that in some cases people didn't read it, but in other cases the the overall criticism was there needs to be better communication in the future. Is that how everything was left then, Jim, in terms of a final note? 
Well, you know, in terms of a final note, I think that it helped to alleviate some of the concerns. I, I mean, the unspoken or, I, I mean, it actually was spoken in the meeting last night is, is that there are underprivileged youth who are not receiving the same treatment as other sections of the county. The, that was refuted in a couple different instances. For example, someone mentioned, well, we, we don't have a, a, a Berkeley 2000 or a pool in, in the west side, and, and, and things like that were discussed. But the fact is, is that the city has made a, a pretty sizable um, allocation for what's going to happen with that particular part of, of the, the city, the, the Lambert or Berkeley 2000 campus. It was reported that $500,000 has been set aside. There were challenges to the county that they need to do something to pony up. There were also challenges to Parks and Rec not being efficient with their spending. There were questions regarding uh, the, the salary of the leadership, why there's not better communication, how the, the, the resources are being allocated. So um, I, I believe that the way that it ended is, is that people felt better about the situation. Uh, a number of people spoke to me at the end. I have five or six pages of notes that need to be debriefed and typed out, and everyone who attended will receive those those minutes. But ultimately, what my goal was to try and eliminate some of the division. Um, Jason Baker actually made a pretty eloquent um, speech or monologue, I guess, towards the end where he talked about we have to come together, we have to put forth a unified front. We talked a little bit about the Shawnee Sports Complex. You know, it's a $15.2 million investment that was led by Salango and the different types of funding that came into play for that. I mean, they got almost $900,000 in ARPA funds, which I know don't exist anymore, but there was congressionally directed spending that actually went into some of the improvements. I believe it was $3 million from Manchin's office. The, the concern, I think, is that will need to be addressed at some point in the future is how much overall money is going to be addressed to those youth in need at that particular part of the city and what investment is going to be um, actually allocated in, in, in the end. Because somebody, you know, made the comment that War Memorial got $2 million a couple years ago. Well, you know, that ultimately opened up a giant can of worms as soon as that was said because the insinuation is, is that the, that part of the city is more valuable because someone was willing to dump $2 million into War Memorial when – Lambert's being held together with duct tape and, and the will of, of the city council for the last eight years. So why can't there be that injection of cash into, you know, Ward 5 or that specific area, the Lambert complex? M my feeling is, and others might disagree, it was a good meeting. There, were, uh, there was a good turnout. Like I said, 23 people signed in, a lot of valuable opinions, a lot of good discussions, some back and forth tense moments along the way, but everyone maintained their composure, and ultimately there were questions to answers that people didn't realize that I think came about. Some, I think, of the elected officials might say, well, if they just came, if the community just came to the city council meetings or just came to Parks and Rec, then we wouldn't get to these, you know, the rumor mills and the different things like that. When I was at the Labor Day breakfast, I talked with Charlie Trump and, and Jim Harnhart and a couple other people, and they said that one of the biggest things that we can do as elected officials is to listen to our constituents, give them an opportunity to have their voice heard. And I think that that happened last night, and I'm especially grateful to every one of those elected officials that, and, and even, you know, Mr. Blake and some of the non-elected city leaders who came to the event, were willing to listen, and even in the tense moments offered a rational explanation, maybe not necessarily a solution, but the promise that action will be taken. They spent over $110,000, the city spent $110,000 to get this scope of work started, which is lightning fast, a huge investment, and they expect to have an answer sometime, maybe even by the end of November. So my feeling is, Many thanks to all who attended, and, uh, you know, I, I thought that it was good for the community. Jim, thanks. I appreciate the update. Thank you, sir. Have a great day, everyone.